I don't know how many people we're going to get on this or how long it's going to hold out when it comes to signal. I know it's a different hat, guys. Sorry, but my canopy has lost all of its um, UV protective coating. It all has come off. And so I got sunburnt the other day out here under my canopy. So when I'm sharpening these days, I've been wearing my, my hat, my, my palm. My palm hat, a palm straw hat. Hey! So I have a very bad knife to work on. It's because I get a sunburn. The, the, like I was saying, the canopy lost all of its UV rated stuff underneath it. Last time I was out here, I sunburned my ears and my neck. And so even though I'm in the shade, the UV is still making it through. Uh, so it's not been the most pleasant, but this is that, this is the knife I showed you guys in the video earlier. I'm gonna try and get it fixed. So this came from a customer for Chris and Elliot. Um, the stuff was in for, for warranty work and refinish. And he requested that I put an edge on it for him. So what we're gonna do is see, nice thing is it's N690. Actually, I need to do that. I need to get my wife's phone real quick. Hang on a second, I gotta do it before and after. You can bring me your phone real quick. I need to use the camera. Did you take the dog? Yes, I took the dog. I need to do a before and after on this. Camera. How do you live with your camera being that dirty? Like, how do you take any good pictures with your camera being that dirty? It wouldn't even focus. Come on. <gasps> there we go. So me message that to myself. Miss Lexi just sent you a picture or uh, sent you a text. Here you go. This is what running a business at home is like. It can be, it's challenging. It's challenging because like I said, I just spent two hours. I spent two hours trying to get something figured out. I had to make calls, had to do all that stuff. I'm like, God damn. I've been dealing with this since eight o'clock this morning. And when you're at home, there, there are distractions. I'm not gonna lie to you. There's distractions working from home. Especially, I mean, I get it right now, the wife and kid are off for summer vacation. But here you can see already. Do you see that? Where the stone's not even touching? Yes, I will do another close up. Here. This is, this is why I don't do live feeds when I'm sharpening often anymore, because it, it can, it's as distracting. So this is the last. Don't ask for any more pictures. Woo. There we go. And I'm, I'm not upset with you, Bradley. It's just, it's, this is, I'm trying to do, trying to do something for you guys and something for me. Seven people, one like. Guys, do me a favor. If you can, remember, if you like the video, first thing when you start getting into video, Get a like because that's like I said, that's the interactions we need to make the community grow. It's the second Mordax I've sharpened in two days. This is the third one I've sharpened in the last two weeks. They're always a pain. Because they're real thick, you got to overcome some thickness issues. And then I don't know what it is about this particular knife, but everyone screws up the sharpening. 
So, Whew. so it's gonna get better. They've been, they come home from ice skating and take a nap. So it's gonna make, it'll make my life a little bit easier because they're both gonna go to bed. So I won't have the distractions. The ice skating thing is taken care of. Next week will be a weird week for you guys as customers. There's not gonna be much happening here at Crazy Sharp. Next week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we're gonna be in Anaheim. Wow, this guy really, really, really screwed this edge up. I wish, I actually wish that I had been able to reset this edge angle before it got refinished it's gonna be I can't be as aggressive because if I screw up then I've screwed up the finish like if I'm doing this the way I would want wow there's just no tip on this I can't even tell if it's chiseled because it's completely round so Fixtured systems, guys. Fixtured systems. It's not the system itself. It's the it's the I'll just get it and I can go to town on a on a really expensive knife and then. I hate having to fix things. I do not know if Matt has gotten his nano ceramic yet. Jesus, there is just, just isn't a tip. I'm gonna tell Chris they need to charge this guy extra. This is not gonna be just a standard $25 Emler Edge when I have to fix things like this. It starts getting expensive. I'm on an extremely coarse stone. I only have one stone coarser than that. There is, it just, it doesn't work very well. That's why Chris and Elliot stopped using it. Haven't we had this conversation before, Brad? I do believe we've, we've talked about this same thing previously. I don't necessarily mean we did, it just feels like it because I've talked to so many people about the same things. Much, much coarser stone. I didn't want to have to resist. I don't like using this stone because you have to spend so much time after getting rid of the scratch pattern. This is so much coarser. I thought for sure it was Bradley. I thought we were talking about something once before on a knife of his. He asked if I could do white. No one wants a white knife anyway. You know what white knives do? They get really dirty. Because I'm going to tell you right now, even though it is a ceramic coating, it, it is impervious to a lot of stuff, it still will get dirty. Right now, I'm not actually sharpening. I'm, I'm not even necessarily following an edge. I am simply trying to... Holy shit, guys. I don't like that stone. I really don't. I mean, if you wanted white scales. Ah, no, this knife has no tip. So somebody just sharpened this so incorrectly that they rounded the tip over completely. And I'm, I'm having to, I'm basically, I'm putting a tip on it as we go. Oh. 
up, guys. This side is the side that needs to come down. So, what happens when people are sharpening? I like N690. N690 is a good all-around steel. It's not horrible. It holds an edge relatively well compared to like other steels. You know, it, it's it it holds its own when it comes to that. Um, and it'll get real sharp. Um, bro, I challenge people's aesthetic choices a lot because I know what it's going to look like. Like they have an image in their head of what they think it's going to look like. And I know in my head exactly what it's going to look like because I've done it enough times. But yes, I challenge people's aesthetic choices. And I tell them, I was like, I can do it. But you're not going to like it. No, no, I think it'd be great. Not, you're not going to like it. 12 people, five likes. Two streams in a day. Yeah, well, I mean, must have a wicked edge. Uh, must have been a wicked edge. We're trying to fix. I want, I want to white accents be nice. The, but here's the thing. The white does not come out. No, but I, like I said, I was thinking, no, I said I was thinking about doing enamel. White enamel. Because the fact is that the white ceramic would not work. So, I mean, it would have to be, I'd have to figure out something because it's not the same. It's not the same process. I'd have to figure out if I even have to mask stuff. That would be about the only way I said it, it would be nice. It probably would be nice, but the, the fact is you just can't do it with the ceramic. Fuck me running. You guys aren't gonna like the video? There's 11 of you, five likes. I'll keep doing that in live feeds. Till somebody's like, dude, shut the fuck up. But the fact is, you guys said to remind you. No, it, it's, it could have easily, this could have easily happened on an Edge Pro. It doesn't necessarily have to be a Wicked Edge. I got a sneaking suspicion since I know the person that, that owns this knife. I know who it went to. It was not something he did on his own. It went to someone that we, we all know. Uh, on Instagram. We're not going to call him out, but we all kind of know him. Um, I've had to fix knives from this person before. And I'm pretty sure I know that this because it's it just looks like one of those edges. I mean, the, there is no edge. He got the heel rounded over too. The heel is like rounded over. I'm putting a new heel and tip on this basically. So I'm not even I'm not even setting my angle yet. I'm just taking off enough material to marry the entire edge up and try and actually put a tip on it. I can neither confirm nor deny, Cody. I said we weren't going to call anybody out by name. Because that's not nice. Uh, yeah. We, we don't like calling people out. That's not nice. That gets you, uh, gets you guideline strikes. Yeah. 
I'm being real aggressive and I'm moving really fast because all I'm trying to do is just take off and hog off material enough to get a tip back on it because that's all I'm doing right now is tip repair. And then go back and set the edge angles. minutes we almost got it back down to having a tip and I'm never gonna I'm never gonna get it back to what it was before now I'm gonna start setting now I'm gonna start setting my edge bevel so I'm gonna spend more time even across the edge than I was because I was spending a lot of time focusing on the tip just the tip just for a second so And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it is warm underneath this canopy today. It's not hot today, but underneath this canopy, like I said, especially since it's lost that UV protection, it's warm. Ah. There we go. Just a tip, just for a second. Now we're going to set the entire edge bevel from heel to tip. Shouldn't have any facets in it now. Wow, this even has a low spot. Where like he got into it enough there's a low spot that i've taken out you can see it because there's different thicknesses and different spots of that edge that's not my doing because that is a straight unfaceted edge now this one's the last couple of facets let's do this one nowhere near as aggressive facets out is that one good straight yeah yep and there we go we have put a tip back on this knife it's not a perfect tip it's never going to be exactly what it was it's still going to be a little squared off but don't forget i haven't even hit 250 grit yet i am still on some very coarse stones i'm gonna take this thing up very crested grit so we're still, we're still, those were some really aggressive stones. So now we're going to start refining that. What's everybody else doing today besides watching me sharpen when they should be working? Cody Moore on the government's dime. that heel where it's just rounded over so bad jesus removing staples with swiss army knife out of your like your leg or i had to get staples in my head one time when I was on the ship, I hit my head real bad. I had to have like six or eight staples in my head. But the thing was, the doc had never, I'm just kidding. The doc had never used the staple gun before. And he goes, oh, let's try this. And he used, so he had to re-staple twice. He had to staple my head twice. And considering I'm allergic to, to the, uh, I'm allergic to the numbing agent, so he did it twice with me feeling it. I do have to say staples were quicker. Of the options, I would rather have staples than stitches. 
uh, they're quicker. They don't hurt any less, they're just way quicker. There's less pulling and tugging. It's just a click, click it, click it, click it, you're good. Because I've had staples several times. I had seven staples in my back. Uh, and uh, had seven staples in my back and it was so much quicker to, to have staples. I didn't suffer as much. Because like I said, they can't numb me, so. No. From the ship. I'm axiprone. I wind up getting stitches about twice a year uh, to the point where I'm I'm in the emergency room often enough that they, they recognize me when I show up. Eh, a little bit. It pinches a little bit. I mean, here's the thing. None of it hurts any worse than a bee sting, to tell you the truth. Actual stitches, like this one here, I was telling Doc, he asked me, I said, what's it feel like? And I was like, well, it's way better now that you've closed it. And he goes, no. I was like, oh, the actual stitch? It feels like a bee sting, if that. Actually, once you cut it, it stays fairly numb. Uh, it stays fairly numb after the incident for a while. The nerves there are basically dead, especially if you, if there's any impact related with the, with the cut. It usually, it's usually fairly, the nerves are fairly deadened already. And so if they can stitch it quick, it doesn't really hurt that bad at all. It's way, way better than a tattoo. I've got four tattoos and I would much rather have sta stitches than get another tattoo. I've cut myself bad enough that there was there was no other option. It had to have stitches. That thumb that I cut up at the shop, that had to have stitches because it had to have stitches in the tendon. I cut the tendon on that one. I basically had to have, I had emergency surgery that night at Balboa. Emergency orthopedic surgery. I've only ever had stitches in my head twice. Well, staples and stitches. I've had staples once and stitches once. And you would think as many times as I'd hit my head real bad that I would have needed more stitches in my head, but no. You'd think talking to me that I'd had stitches in my head a lot. I'm gonna lie, there's been a bunch of times that I definitely should have had stitches and didn't go. It's another one of ones that just is never gonna feel sharp with my hands being wet. So, what? 23 minutes in, I'm doing a full tip repair and I'm already at 650. That's not a bad, that's not bad time. I'm not making bad time on this at all. I will tell you something. You have to watch on a knife that has a big belly curve like that, like that steep, where that it's such a drastic drop. You're going to want to watch that edge right there and make sure that it's actually coming down the way you want because what happens is it has a tendency to peel off. I don't know why in that area specifically. The Mordaxes, I've always have to spend more time than I, can, than I thought I was going to to set that edge and get all those little nicks and chips and stuff out. I don't know what grit this was sharpened to before, but if it was sharpened, like still factory edge stuff like that, it's usually on grinder edges that I run into that. I normally stick to the uh, band aids and super glue, but the problem is that with this autoimmune disorder and taking immunosuppressors, when I cut myself real bad like that and I put super glue on it, it's almost a given that it's gonna get infected. It's better to just leave it open. I just sharpened uh, Chris's yesterday, and I'm a fan. They're a little light, but once you get used to the actual ch difference in weight, um, once you get used to the difference in weight, it actually is an incredibly nice knife. Uh, I just, 
have gotten so used to my Mordax, which is the original, the actual, the OG, it's, and it's a lot heavier. So, but it's got titanium scales, not aluminum. And so it's just, it just feels different in hand. And it, it's not that it's, it, it's worse or anything. It's just not what my OG Mordax is. All right. This isn't the proper way to do this, but this thing is real loaded and just needed a quick touch. What is that? Wait one what? So I did not refinish this. Chris actually did. This is one of Chris's refinishes. And it just was simply a uh, murdered out all black Mordax. And it looks great. My Mordax, I believe my Mordax needs a facelift. I want to do something to mine. And I'm pretty sure that's going to involve a buoyed out blade. I think I'm going to buoy my Mordax. And I'll just ask Elliot, hey, if I buoy it, because I got to tell you something, guys. I'll tell you what I can't do. I can't do swedges. Um, nah, but true. I'll tell you what, when I get off of here, I, I'll probably give you a call. This is a lot. I actually got the other stuff done this morning. Uh, I got up early. So, cause I knew I was gonna have to deal with this ice skating thing for my wife. So, I mean, I kind of was thinking ahead and I got up fairly early. I started it at, right after they left and got most of the stuff done before I did the nine o'clock live feed <clears throat> and all that stuff. So or the 8.30 live feed. So I was like, you know, I kind of knew it was going to happen. So I, I I, did the good thing and, and used my time correctly. What's up, babe? I need to buy a eBay for 16 dollars basis. Can I pay for Yeah, yeah, yeah. Money? Yeah, that's fine. No, I, I leave $500 in there every time because I know you have to order stuff off eBay. Because it's too short on laces. What laces are too short? Her laces? Yeah. In her new skates? Yeah. What about the old skates? Can she use mistake. the old laces for one? They huh? mistake to bring up. Anyway. anyway, yeah, just order them. That's fine. So she almost uh, oh. Okay. Actually, um, so... This is vinegar, this is white vinegar and um, peroxide, 3% peroxide. Probably should move this. 3% per peroxide, it has not been used yet. 3% um, peroxide and uh, just regular white, distilled white vinegar. Um, and I sprayed the areas that it was stuck. Yes, I am still using the Dime Matrix, but on this, uh, I'm going to switch to the natural stones here shortly. So the natural stones are actually, they're not in. This needs to go in. Um, I'm going to switch to the natural stones on the next stone because they just, the, anything above 650 just loads uh, when you're using softer steels like N690. They work really great on 20 CV. I'm just checking my edge to make sure I didn't 
I don't have any scratch pattern left over from previous stones, especially at the apex. Easy way to tell. That edge. Oh, there's a little bit right there. Um, like I said, they, they just like to load when you get above the 650, like when you get to the 1,000 grit. Not a new hat. I've had the hat. Like I was saying, Jack, the, uh, the canopy lost. There's a little silver coating that goes on the underneath of these canopies. Mine has lost all of it. It collapsed so many times. It got wrinkled up. It got torn up. It's been in the sun for so long. It's all dry rotted. I mean, I could poke holes in it with my finger. It keeps the shade off. It keeps me a little cooler. Or it keeps the sun off me. It keeps me a little bit cooler. But the UV is getting through, and I got a sunburn on my face from sharpening out here yesterday. So I just decided, with that being said, this is going to be the new sharpening hat. And I have a spot for it out here and everything. So I have a hat hanger. Since I forgot where I put it. I got a hat hanger that I can put my hat on, just keep it out here. Just like I hang my sweatshirt up there. I've had this hat for years. I've had this hat. I think I got this hat at the Lakeside Rodeo. I hadn't had a good straw hat in a while. I got a couple other hats. I have a a black felt resist all and a couple other old hats, but none of them were something I would want to wear. They, they weren't that comfortable. This thing is so comfortable, you can't even tell you got it on sometimes. It is hot though today. It's uh, it's upwards of 80, I think. It's about 80 degrees right now. It's not hot, hot. It's just enough to make you sweat because it's, it's damp. It's kind of humid today. So 80 and humid, still make you sweat. Okay, edge tip repair is done. So when I'm doing this, I'm just making sure that's as good as I'm gonna get it. Without taking material off the spine, that's as good as that's gonna get. Uh, so I'll show you in a minute, because I'm, I'm coming up on being done with this. This won't, the, the next couple stones won't take very long, the next few stones. Because There it is. Okay, so now we're back on natural stones. Well, not necessarily natural stones. Aluminum oxide. I'm on an aluminum oxide. Uh, I'm on the aluminum oxide 650 or 600 because the aluminum oxide 600, and this is a different brand. I'm trying this one. This is a different brand 600 grit aluminum oxide. Uh, I just wanted to give it a try. They were pretty cheap. It seems like it cuts well. Um, I know I went to 650 on the other stones, but I, I want to make sure that I'm getting a matching grit pattern. So I'm staying in the same realm. I mean, that works pretty well. That's a pretty good 600 grit edge. So this cuts real well. The nice thing is if you do this, you don't have to, I'm not going to have to spend much time on here on these next few stones because I'm at a really fine grit. So all I'm doing is refining scratch pattern it gets easier and easier to take the scratch pattern out as you move up in grit if you took it out properly on the grit before so last grit 600 this is 650 I'm gonna switch to a thousand here in just a second I may actually you know what I want to try and use the I want to use the diamond matrix thousand grit oh yeah that that's that's a good one Let's try that. Let's try that Diamond Matrix Thousand Grit and see how it cuts on this. Oh, that's got that's got grit stuck in it. I think I just screwed up. I'm gonna have to go back down to 650. I may have just put some deeper scratches in it that I didn't intend to. 
nope, just felt weird. Um, always check your stones for abhorrent, abhorrent grit. The best thing to do is just wipe them off real quick on a clean towel. That's why I have a clean towel here separate of the others. And so, I wish I had enough room for like a sterile. Each, each stone gets its own uh, tub and I could separate and then I wouldn't get any grit contamination from stone to stone. I'd wipe the blade off. I just don't have that kind of room. So, there we go, that feels better. So I'm gonna hit a thousand on this and strop and then look and see what my edge looks like. This thousand grit diamond matrix does a really good job. Yeah, that's gonna come out great. But I wanna do it and then strop and then I will go back up to the next grits off camera because I'm not gonna keep this going too much longer. I just wanted to do the tip repair on, on film. but. We'll take a quick look at it. Even at a thousand grit, after I strop it, it's gonna come out, it's gonna look great. I'll just finish the rest of it off camera because I really wanna just get it done and then I can spend some time with my kids. This is the last thing I'm sharpening today. It's the last thing I'm sharpening. Um, like I said, I started early. I had that karambit and that recurve Tonto already done. I would show you guys, but I already boxed them up too. So, I mean, I'm basically ready to ship. I've just, I have a big box of stuff that was supposed to be here yesterday didn't show up it's supposed it was supposed to be here today i got notification that it is in chino so there's a delay on that package so uh to my customer if you happen to be watching that box with like six knives in it that you were supposed to send me um is in chino california at the sorting facility in chino so it's actually going to be late another day so if you make coffee i will drink a little bit yes would you like to try the other one the new one the turkish coffee it's really good okay i didn't think so 16 people 11 likes actually there's probably more than 16 15 people Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go to. Yeah, she doesn't like she doesn't like the same coffee as I like. I'm gonna go ahead. I'll take this. Take this up to four thousand because I'm, I'm gonna put it on the four thousand grit matrix stone um, and just see if I see any. And then I can take it to eight thousand and then ten thousand. So. I actually like the finish on this sometimes on certain stuff, these the finish on these stones at a lower grit better than I like it at the higher grit it's just so that's let's give it a quick pass on the two on the on the 2300 no the 4000 I'm sorry 4000 that was a 2300 this is 4000 I was just gonna take it to a thousand but I've switched stones a couple times I mean we are for all intents and purposes the sharpening's done I'm just doing honing and polishing, making sure that I've got all the old scratch pattern. That's all it really takes on that stone. Oh, wow. Holy crap. That stone cuts so aggressive. It's a little softer than other diamond matrix stones. Yep. And there we go. Look at that. Let's give a quick strop and see if she cuts. Now, I could get away with stropping this material on the chromium because this is a good bit softer steel. Oh, yeah, that is, that is mirror. Let me go ahead and give it a half micron just to touch it. Just touch, just to make sure that I don't have any scratch pattern stuck. Make sure there's no strop compound stuck in the... 
That's beautiful. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. That's that's about as good an edge as you're gonna get on this material. She cuts, she cuts, she cuts well. There we go. Just need to touch up one little area right here at the very heel that I missed on that last stone. I can see just a little bit of and that's just that spot where it was rounded over. I'm just trying to me. He really did a number on that. So I can't it's never actually gonna be sharp because he just rounded that off, but I can at least polish. Hey, there you guys are. <laughs> he he all I'm trying to do is just marry the finish. I can't there is no edge at that very spine. That guy screwed that edge up so horribly bad that I just can't, I can't sharpen it. But what I can do is match the, the finish almost to the edge. So. So I'm not exactly doing it the way I would typically. Let's see. My wife doesn't like being on live feeds. You guys know that? Yuki, you don't like being on a live feed, do you? People do not make fun of your accent. News for you, you guys make fun of my wife's accent, you're in trouble. Hang on a second, I need to grab my other straw. I don't make fun of your accent. I don't make fun of your accent. I make fun of you for getting your eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just using this because that this strop needs resurfaced the tiny 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 little micro serrations and you can see it and it doesn't affect cutting or anything the first time you cut something it would be gone um, but this allows me to I can strip that out with this yep there we go Woo! And then, just for good measure, we'll go tip to heel and tip to heel just to make sure that I got all that stuff out of all those little micro serrations. And yeah, I do. They are nice and clean. And there we go. There's 4,000 grit. I'm going to come back around, but like I said, I just wanted to show you guys tip repair. So let's turn it around and look at the very tip. It is bright out here. It's going to be hard to see. Probably going to have to turn you guys this way there we go hey guys can you see up my nose the tripod's trying to fall down so there you go it's it's magnetic as well so i would say whatever one he was using had a magnetic fixture so if you guys could tell me what what Sharpening system has magnetic because the tip of this this whole knife is magnetic so There you go Tip repair on a Mordex I Honestly think I've had to repair the tips on more Mordexes than any other of the ferro forge knives I don't know what it is about this knife that people just round that tip over I, I'm, I'm not I can't put my finger on why they'd be doing it, but this knife in particular, but that'll do, donkey. That'll do. I need to get a hold of my friend Alex. Oh well, I'm I'm leaving.
I need to replace this with a different hat band. Um, I've had this hat for a while, this leather band on the inside. It's getting, it's getting pretty nasty. And I think, I think I can re, I think I can just fill, I could put a, a sweatband in the front of that. Pretty sure of it. But it's such a perfect fit. I've worn this a windstorm and this thing hasn't come off. Uh, we're riding horses, it doesn't matter. This, this thing, this hat is, you gotta pull it off, it's on there. So, all right guys, that's the end of it. We uh, did a full tip repair, didn't screw up the finish. Got her good and sharp. Man, that is, like I said, I'm, I'm gonna come back, I'll take it to 10,000, but I've got a couple other things I wanna do before that. So, that's a full, 4,000 grit. That's a 4,000 grit edge. And it's, oh yeah, definitely. There they go. So, all right, guys, that's it. Thank you, Mr. Troop. Haven't talked to you in a while. How you been? God. Yeah, I bet. What time did you guys get up and go skate? <laughs> I got her on the live feed, guys. I got her on the live feed for a second. What time did you guys get up? No, what time did you guys get up? Because I heard you guys leave, but... I say, what time did you guys get up? Five? Five thirty? Six. Six thirty. Okay. Yeah, she, was, she didn't sleep last night. So, guys, I'm going to have a cup of coffee. Um, like I said, if you guys need, I can take that off. If you guys need sharpening, I'm, I'm pretty available right now. Um, it's been, it's been slow this week. I got a bunch of stuff coming, but it has been slow uh, last week or so. But I kind of knew that because I always have the big week right after Blade Show. And then I have this week, which is the week after the week after Blade Show. A couple weeks after Blade Show, and it just it 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 falls off. It definitely does fall off. But it picks right back up because the reason it falls off is it's not so much the Blade Show. It's a combination of two things. It's Blade Show, and this is typically when people are. This is the time where people are on vacation. Most of my normal customers that that are return customers, they're on vacation somewhere. Uh, this is family vacation month, pretty much. So. Okay, and you're not gonna go up and sleep with your girl? They're gonna go, she's gonna go take a nap with the dog. So, all right guys, we'll give it another couple minutes. I'll drink some coffee and talk to you. But yeah, that, that's, that's 45 minutes-ish. That's about what it takes for me to, to do a tip repair. Let's see, can you see it better in this light? Yeah, see now it, now it has a fucking tip. It's not rounded. It's good and even, even from the spine. It's, it's not kicked over, and it doesn't have that dull rounded tip. Unless this guy was British and just rounded the tip off on purpose because he just didn't want to have to deal with it. So that's got to go to the shop. I'm going to the shop tomorrow. Um, oh, guys, if you guys are interested, I have three Neckers that are available right now. I have three of them that are available for sale. Um, they are black and turquoise, but I can always change the color scheme for you if you want. So if that's something you want, if you're interested in that, let me know because like I said, I've got three of them that are already done and made. And uh, basically all I'd have to do is, is just finish them for you in a different color. So do you want me to go grab them? I don't see, there's only 12 of those here. Do you guys want me to go grab them so we can look at them? There we go. Let's have a look see. So they already have sheets. So these could be, if you like the color scheme, I could have these out this week. I wouldn't even have to send them off for sheath. 
So you got the black and then the turquoise. Um, these uh, with two-tone. Uh, two-tone is uh, 120. So a two-tone is 120. And like I said, they already have their sheaths. Uh, I don't have any paracord for the lanyard around the neck, but definitely. So um, <clears throat> I'm not even going to charge the sheath because the guy that originally ordered these already paid for the sheaths. So it would be 120 plus shipping. So you'd be looking at 135 total. So... They, I like the look. I like the black and turquoise. I've done a couple black and turquoise ones before. And I always like the way, I always like that color combination. It always looks good. They are sharp too, boy. I like some chisel grind stuff. There's a good chance that I'm gonna do a knife that is strictly chisel ground, and it's gonna be my Matt Freeman tribute um, to Big Fucking Kitty. I just have not decided what knife I'm gonna do it in. Uh, what knife is gonna be the chisel. I just, I've had that in my mind that I was gonna do a chisel ground fixed blade. Um, but it would have to be something, I don't think I want to try and do a chisel on one of my Hornets. Maybe. I've got some I'm going to do in 1095. I'm going to do some in 1095. I might do a chisel grind on those. That might be interesting. And then I'm going to gun blue whatever I'm doing. And then I'm going to, uh, I'm going to try and get the CMFTW on it somehow. But like in memory of or something like that. I'm gonna try and get that figured out. I'm gonna see if I can get somebody to engrave that for me because I could, I could engrave something. Is the razel a chisel grind? No, it's a V grind. It's just a modified Tonto. It is just, it comes up and then comes straight across. It's just a modified, it looks like a chisel, but it's not chisel ground. It is very, very much a fucking modified Tonto. Well, guys, I'm out of here. I got other stuff I want to do. I'm actually going to get some stuff packed up for shipping. Um, and, oh, I still have to cut a... I still have to cut a groove in the... Uh, or a, a, a choil, a sharpening choil in that... Sharpening notch in that um, spider co. Then I'm done for the day. And I can just get stuff ready for packing and shipping. So, all right, guys. I'm out. Take it easy. I've, I'm getting texts... I'm getting texts from a customer as we talk. He's got a couple questions. He's trying to get shit shipped to me. So um, I'll see you guys later. I, now I got to figure out what I'm going to do about that package that's currently sitting in Chino, California, because that's the second package. My Amazon stuff wound up getting sent to Chino by accident. I'm not not happy with that, but it's still better than FedEx. <laughs> FedEx will lose your shit. When it absolutely positively has got to be lost today, send it via FedEx. Never had a good experience with FedEx, really. So, all right, guys, I'm out. Talk to you later.